about human, the hematopoiesis is going on in the diaphysis of the bone, in the red bone marrow. Here we can find a pluripotent stem cells that during the division is going to divide into the myeloid stem cells and the lymphoid stem cells very early. From the myeloid stem cells, later on, the dedicated cell line, such as the erythroid cell line, such as the erythroblast, megacarrier blast, myeloblast, and monoblast is getting to be. The erythroblast is going to form the erythrocytes, Why the megakaryoblast is going to form the megakaryocytes or the platelets. The myeloid cell is going to produce the granulocytes, such as the basophilic granulocytes, the eosinophilic granulocytes, and the neutrophilic granulocytes. The monoblast is going to form a monocyte. The lymphoid system is divided into the B lymphoblastic system and the T lymphoblastic system. The B lymphoblasts start to mature in the bone marrow and later on getting into the circulation into the lymphatic nodes and getting back again as a plasma cell, while the T lymphocytes is processed inside the T thymus. If you summarize these cells, you can see that the granular leukocytes together with the monocytes and lymphocytes, such as the egg granular leukocytes, forms the Y blood cell system. In the bone marrow, we do have a very high percellular area. The bone marrow is a dedicated place for the erythropoiesis or the myeloporiasis. It summarizes the hematopoiesis. This extracellular matrix is going to house these cells because these cell surface receptors are going to anchor these cells into the extracellular matrix, and these cells is getting very close to each other and let them to exchange some mediators, some cytokines that is going to help them for maturing and to divide. If you look at the composition of the bone marrow, normally we do have about three times more myeloid precursors or granuloid precursors than erythroid precursors. The granuloid precursors takes out about three times more cells than an erythroid precursor. This is due to the shorter lifespan of the myeloid cell comparing to the erythroid one. The lymphocytes and monocytes takes about less than 10% of the all cells in the bone marrow. We do have another 10% that cannot be identified or some disintegrated cells. Do not forget, in the bone marrow, we do have much more maturated cells than early cells. So the rarest to find an early blast, the most easy one to find a maturated cells. If you want to recognize a cell in the bone marrow, First of all, we have to find the position in the maturation line. When we do have an immature cells, we call them blast. The maturated one is called site. If you consider the size of the cell and the cytoplasm staining of the cell, the unmaturated one, the blast cell has a relatively larger size and blue cytoplasm, the basophilic cytoplasm. When we do have mostly the nucleic acid synthesis is going on. However, when very slowly the specific protein is synthesized and accumulates in the cytoplasm, the color of the cytoplasm is changing to eosinophilia. Very similarly to the nuclear size and the staining of the nuclear structure is going to be changed. In an early, in a blast stage, the nucleus is a huge, large, almost occupies fully the cell, and we do have only a very narrow cytoplasm that surrounds the nucleus. 
and when the maturation and the division is goes on, the nucleus is getting smaller, the cytoplasm, when the protein, the specific protein is going to be accumulated, the cytoplasm is taking bigger place of the cells. Later on in certain cells, this nucleus is lost and we do not have any nucleated cells when we do have a matured cells. The chromatin structure is very important one. At the beginning, when we do have to multiply the DNA, we have to unrun the chromosome. So we do have a very homogen chromatin structure. As the division is slowing down and stops, the chromatin is getting more dense and smaller cell. Similarly to the nucleoli inside the nucleus, at the beginning, in the blast phase, we do see them, and they are very important to regulate the division. However, when the division is shutting down, it's almost invisible, this nucleoli. So they are going to disappear upon the slowing the metabolism. Granules, certain cells, especially the granulocytes containing granulation. At the beginning, in the blast phase, there is no granules. However, during the maturation, first the aspecific granulation comes, later on the specific granules will dominate the granules in the cytoplasm. Looking at the two most important composition of the cells of the bone marrow, the erythroid, the upper panel, and the myeloid in the lower panel, they are not the same. They do have some very striking difference. The erythroid, they do have round nucleus. Why the myeloid cells, they do not have round nucleus. Another very important difference is the color of the cytoplasm. As the erythroid has a very basophilic cytoplasm and less basophilia or less blue in the myeloid cell line. When you are looking at the aproerythroblast, the first stage that can be distinguished by light microscope, we do see that the edge of the nucleus is very finely and very nicely differentiated from the cytoplasm because we do have a very light or a wider perinuclear area that's surrounding it. Next one, when the chromatin structure of the blast is getting a little bit dense, you do see some patches, some dark patches inside the chromatin structure. And the cells a little bit, let's see, the smaller one, the size comparing to the erythroblast that's about 20, 22 micrometers, while the basophilic one, it is less about two micrometers. These, let's see, uh, shrinking of the size is going to be, and the basophilia is be less blue, and the next stage is still bigger size than the red blood size, we can compare the size of the cells to the red blood cells. So that's be the polychromatic normoblast. Why, when we do have about the same size as a red blood cells, this called orthochromatic normoblast. The nuclear structure is very dense and they do have a very typical pattern that can be used to distinguish from the myeloid or the lymphoid origin. This is the last cells that can be found in the bone marrow normally. However, if we do have an extra marrow erythropoiesis due to a very severe anemia, for example, hemolytic anemia, when we do have a very much increase of the erythropoiesis, or we do have a splenectomy, we can have nucleated red blood cells in the periphery as well. Or we do have an extra marrow erythropoiesis, for example, in the spleen or in the liver. And in that case, we do have nucleated red blood cell, such as happening in sickle cell anemia. When this cell lost the nucleus by carrier axis, we do have is called reticulocytes. We cannot see these little substances inside the red blood cells. This is an RNA, messenger RNA, or ribosomal RNA that we do have inside red blood cells because the protein synthesis is still going on normally for 24 hours when the cell are losing this reticular filamentosa and is going to form 
the normal red blood cells. The reticulocytes are a little bit bigger comparing to the red blood cells in size. It's the difference between these two about one micrometer. So if you count about seven or eight micrometer of the red blood cells, this should be around eight, nine micrometers in reticulocytes. Looking at the myeloid cell line, we do have the early stage as a myeloblast. We do see some light stained, lighter stained uh, nucleoli. In erythroid cell, usually we do have darker stained nucleoli. That's another difference between the erythroid and the myeloid cell. Myeloblast does not have granulation in the cytoplasm. However, when the maturation is going on and starting, first the azorophil granulation is going to accumulate in the cytoplasm and forms this azorophil granulation and the cell is getting bigger and that cell is called promyelocyte. As the maturation goes on, specific granulation accumulates inside the cytoplasm and the specific granulation is going to decrease at the cell size be about the same as a normal cell, so about 16 to 18 micrometers. And we do have a specific granulation, and that's the stage is a myelocyte. Normally, this is the last step inside the bone marrow. Later on, the nucleus is maturating. First, a bean shape occurred, that's called the metamyelocyte or juvenile. We do have a neutrophil, eosinophil, or a basophilic. And later on is a band-shaped or stub. And the final one, the segmented, when we do have a very densely compact uh, nucleus. Neutrophil, eosinophil, and basophil. This is the summary of the erythropoiesis. First, proerythroblast, basophilic normoblast, polychromatophilic normoblast, orthochromatophilic erythroblast or normoblast, erythrocytes, and red blood cells. With myeloblast, promyelocyte, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, band, and the different segmented one, such as the neutrophil, eosinophil, and the basophil. Make a note. The eosinophil is not red, the granules. Usually it's brown, but this darker one, not as fine as a neutrophil. Much bigger and darker uh, granules can be found in the basophilic granulocyte. Now, some other cells we can see in the bone marrow as well. There are some cells that they do have some lobulated nucleus blue cytoplasm, some vacuolation in it. The size of the cells can be varies from 20 to 26 micrometers. And because these lobulated nucleus, these cells are the monocyte. The next batch of cells, these eight cells, labeled with two and six, they are similar cells, except the first four at number two, they have about the same size as red blood cells. The nucleus is almost fills up the old cells, very narrow, narrow cytoplasm and blue cytoplasm. While another one is about double the size of the red blood cells, and they do have a bigger cytoplasm in some tiny tiny particles, some tiny tiny granules can occur in it. These eight cells, these are lymphocytes. The number two labeled as a small lymphocytes, and number six, large lymphocytes. Number three, as an interesting cell, is filled up with lipid droplets. This has a very important pathogenic role in the development of atherosclerosis. This is the first phase when we do have this form cell, when it's going to form the fatty streak, when the macrophage is going to eat up the all lipids and they are going to form this form cell. Number four, that's the biggest cells in the bone marrow. The size is about 20, 50 times bigger than a normal cell. So it's very close in the maturity, very close to the 100 micrometers. 
and these cells is going to form the platelets. This is the megakaryocyte. Number five. This when we made a slide in anatomy, they looks like as a ring. However, here, because we made a smear, we have squished the cells, these little empty, teeny tiny holes resembles to the lipid droplets. So this is the adipocyte. Number six. Number six, we do have elongated cells in the one edge we do have the very dense nucleus these are the osteoblast in the multinucleated cells these are the osteoclasts very common one as we mentioned about less than 10 percent in the bone marrow this looks like is an eccentric located round nucleated cells with basophilic cytoplasm vacuolated cytoplasm Sometimes you can see some weird structure inside the nucleus. These are plasma cells. It's very easy to distinguish between the erythroid and the plasma cells because erythroid never has vacuoles in the cytoplasm. Why a plasma cells they do? Number nine filled up with very dark and very big black granules. And these granules contain serotonin and histamine. These are the histiocytes that can 